Kenyatta National Hospital and various hospitals that are around here. We have also received uh, other cases who are seriously, uh, who are having actually the, the, the fractures in their lower limbs. We have attended to them with a very good team here who, are, who have assisted us here. And uh, so far we are still waiting for more. In case of any other casualties, we are ready to assist them. However, we are still receiving a lot of challenges of supplies and many other commodities that we need here. So far, uh, we've had around like uh, 15 practitioners who have come from various hospitals and various uh, actually sister hospitals to assist us here. We also received a very good uh, help from the Catholic Church, which has given us this ground. However, there are another challenge we are also receiving. Uh, the, we have been tear gassed here. So we are actually having a lot of challenges here, but uh, it is out of utmost uh, solidarity we are here to assist ho those who are actually, those who are found to be injured. Okay. Just, just to wrap it up, how many have you received and how many are in critical condition? And what are you telling the government uh, for those who are, who are lobbying tear gas inside here? Uh, I've actually received uh, close to 30 to 40 patients, casualties who have received. Those who are seriously injured have been around uh, 9 to 10. Uh, seriously injured with broken legs, some who have been shot on their thighs, some who have been shot on the, on the head, slightly uh, the bullet uh, passing through. And uh, I've actually, I'm here to tell the, the government that uh, we are here just to give the humanitarian services. We are not... Uh, uh, having any other pa part of the 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 the, 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 the so-called uh, what, what the, the demonstration, for us we are just giving what is actually right for us to do. Your name, your name. Uh, my name is Johnny Yadi. I'm here from the call of uh, our Secretary General of uh, the Kenya National National Union of Nurses. Thank you so much. Let me speak to another one quickly. Your name and tell us uh, how is the situation here. My name is Felix Musila. Just stand where you are. Okay, sorry. My name is Felix Musila, Emergency Plus Medical Services Kenya Records. I'm part of the medical team that has been uh, on standby here from uh, 7 in the morning till now. And uh, so far we have, uh, if I can just give you the numbers we have so far, at our tent we have attended to 21 injured persons. 
those persons have been evacuated to the Kenyatta National Hospital and Bagathi Hospital. And we do have 76 that, are, that have been attended to our three standby uh, locations in Nairobi. We are here at uh, Holy Family Basilica. We also have another standby location at uh, All Saints Cathedral and then at uh, Jamia Mosque. Okay. Oh, apart from this location, do you have numbers from the other locations? Yes, the numbers that I do have in the last 30 minutes that uh, we have uh, evacuated into one people um, to Kenyatta, like I did mention. From which center? from all the, all the three uh, locations and you have uh, attended to and stabilized 76 at, at the three standby locations uh, within CBD. All right. Any challenges? Challenges is that uh, we have a call for backup. Uh, you know, of course, the, the numbers uh, got a bit overwhelming. So I do have a confirmation that you're having uh, more ambulances uh, to here. So we do expect in the next uh, few minutes we shall be, be having a, you know, um, a backup. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. We'll be getting to you for Santa, more updates. Santa, Santa. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right.
Ndiko na doroka huko ya naende.
this demonstration can be contained in a peaceful manner. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>
you the kind of rage these particular protesters
vehicle there. Uh, previously on Tuesday last week, these protests were largely peaceful. Uh, on Thursday, they were largely peaceful. In fact, it was the police who were being accused of excessive force. What changed to what, your mind, Wakili? What, what, what changed today is that the protesters were provoked. It is the police who started... In using, your opinion. In my opinion. In your opinion. And I, I, I will share with you. I have been here But from, uh, before we get into all of that, uh, Ryoba, your reaction to what we are seeing on the screen? I want to say this. This is a foundation. We have to be able to help the people who are Kwa sababu wananchi ndio wamewapa nguvu za kukaa pale. Wamewapa nguvu za kuwaongoza lakini imefikia sehemu viongozi hawa ambao walipewa hizi nguvu wananyanyasa wana, wana, wana watu wao. Malcolm X alisema hivi. Ukimwona mtu amenyamaza na unamfanyia mambo ina maana ananungunika ndani ya moyo wake akilia. Lakini atakapochukua sila yake aiweke wazi ina maana lazima mabadiliko yatakuwepo. Sasa mabadiliko ndio sasa yanakuja kwa sababu viongozi hao walifikiria wananchi hawa hawawezi kutoka nje wakafanya kitu. But sasa you know, wameona the, the sasa ni moto. The protest has always been the problem of infiltration by criminal. Mm -hmm. yes. A criminal criminals mm. criminal elements trying to take advantage of the situation. Yes. But the pictures you can see now uh, on your screen are the Kenyatta are from the Kenyatta National Hospital. Mm. Uh, earlier we had from uh, those who are providing medical assistance at the Holy Family Basilica that uh, 21 from that station were transported. Uh, I, no, I believe they said what 20 they had treated 21 injured some of them some of the 21 uh, were transported to the Kenyatta National Hospital we saw the ambulance there mm -hmm. and to Mbagadi we see uh, medical personnel out there uh, the, in total I think they talked about 76 saying they had stations and that was the Kenya Red Cross mm -hmm. at uh, Holy Family Basilica at the Old Saints Cathedral and at the Jamia Mall they mm -hmm. were asking police not to lob tear gas canisters into those sanctuaries because yeah. that is essentially what they are mm -hmm. and allow them uh, to help those uh, who are wounded the we saw uh, unions Kenya medical practitioners and dentists union clinical officers uh, saying they were available to provide medical assistance mm -hmm. uh, to those who may have been injured in these protests. Mm. Prior to now, there were, two young, there were the two young men who were killed um, yeah. following the Thursday protest. Today we also saw, uh, we even heard from our reporters on the field that several have uh, been killed and that there were bodies outside parliament um, precincts. Mm. Why, John, mm. this escalation? Yes. Uh, I know that... Uh, Wakili took the position that the protesters may have been provoked. And, and we've been watching, we've been watching from morning. You will remember that the first person to be shot dead was no, when... No, I don't, I don't really want to get into that. But I mm. just wanted to get your thoughts generally on let, how the police have respond responded. Let directly and yeah. say, uh, the first thing is this, eh? uh, two branches of government. So we are a tricameral system with the executive, the judiciary and the legislature. The legislature has the Senate and Parliament. That was breached today, both of them. And then there were uh, talks that, uh, or rather there were reports of the Supreme Court, uh, you know, uh, pressings also being breached. And then even outside Nairobi, some seats of the executive government, like in Mombasa State House and all that, the, the, the perimeters were breached. So that's one reason for the escalation. If you had the interior uh, press briefing yesterday, it, um, there was a specific caution about the uh, national critical infrastructure and people being told don't, uh, don't interfere with that, don't damage property and all that. So that's an element which means uh, the marching orders of the police force or other police service were uh, to protect lives and property and at some point that gets breached. But to your specific comment, yes, the unfortunate part of uh, such uh, public uh, protest is that you don't know which elements are in there. For example, I'll give you uh, a good example. We saw the church there. Uh, you know, it was not just a safe haven, but also at uh, a triage uh, a point for medical services. A lot of professionals have volunteered, the, the lawyers and the medics, uh, to provide uh, services to those who are protesting. But now, when uh, things escalate and people are running away, you'll see that uh, protesters will go and take shelter there, and the security forces who are already responding to what's going on in town uh, where we've seen... All right, so just sorry to cut you short, John, but let's get a sense of what's happening in Nyeri as we speak. Yeah. Yeah. 
Luciana Kujani. We now cross back to the Kenyatta National Hospital. As I mentioned earlier, those who were injured in the protests were taken there to receive medical assistance. We have Willie Lusige, who is on ground. Willie, can you tell us what is tr transpiring? Olive, definitely it has not been the usual day here at the Accident and Emergency Department at the KNH because this is where they are receiving all those who have been injured during the today's demonstration against the Finance Bill 2024-2025. And you have been camping here for a while, actually for like three or four hours, and you have seen so many people who are being brought in here. Most of them have been injured, especially in regard to bullet wounds. Some of them have been injured uh, in terms of different body parts. Others have been injured on their legs, their hands, and some of them also have seen victims who have also uh, nursing bullet wounds on their heads. And we have been camping here to be able to see what will be happening in the course of the day, those who are coming in, and also to be able to get the numbers of those who have been injured. So far, as per the statement that has been issued a few minutes ago by the Kenyatta National Hospital Communication Department, they have said they have received so far 45 victims, and they are still receiving others, so that is not the end number but they are still waiting to be able to capture the total number of details at the end of the day. But as per my own observation, by the time that they were saying they had uh, 45 injured victims, so far we have received more than those, and now the number is going much higher. I can say maybe most probably between 80 and 100, and we have seen some of the ambulances that are arriving here with uh, more than two or three victims in them. Th those ones that you're seeing on your screen, those are the parents, family and friends of those who have been informed, maybe their relatives or even people close to them have been brought here because I've spoken to some of the families they're saying they have only received calls from the Kenyatta National Hospital hospital being told that maybe their family members or even friends have been brought here so that's why they are coming here to be able to see what will happen next and also to be given a chance to get in there in the wards and to have a word maybe with their friends but some of them who have been brought in here they are critically injured uh, many of them have been taken to uh, we are being told by the nurses and the doctors who have spoken to ICU because of the bullet wounds and those ones who have not been highly injured are also being uh, treated in different places because the hospital as per now the accident and emergency wards are full. That's why they have been trying to find other places to be able to find shelter for those ones who are still being brought in. We have seen different medics, different ambulances, different organizations trying to bring in those victims without considering where they were found or even if they have their relatives uh, nearby. And the number has been increasing since we came here uh, in the course of the day. But as per the statement that was issued by KNH, they said the number of victims We came here uh, in the course of the day. But as per the statement that was issued by Ken H, they said the number of victims are, is actually 45, those ones injured. But this is because they started to receive the victims from 12 noon. And the number that they gave us, that was the total number that they had received by 3 p.m. And then it definitely is clear, you can see from 3 p.m. up to now, the number is a little bit higher. I've also witnessed more than... 30 or 40 ambulances coming here, and many of them are not carrying one individual or two, but some are carrying even up to four.
higher up to more than 100 by the end of the day. But the hospital has said it requires more time because it's an emergency crisis uh, to be able to gather more details. They said out of the 45 that they had received, eight were female, which means the rest, which is the majority, were men. And you can... Those are more patients coming into the Kenyatta National Hospital. As at now, we don't have the exact figures. We do have the exact figures were given by Red Cross earlier, but let's continue to listen in. Wakitaka.
hall is full, so this is the only place they can be able to receive them quickly and find a place to take them to because we have seen many of the victims are either injured, most probably by bullet wounds. Some of them are majorly injured on their lower parts of the body. Those are legs. And I've seen other victims have also been injured even in their heads. Some of them were very critically injured, and that's why many of them have been taken to uh, ICU. But uh, the hospital has said it needs more time to be able to gather data, to be able to gather more information about all the victims that have been brought in by... But the statement that I've issued at 3 p.m., they said they had received 45 uh, injured uh, protesters, and among them, uh, eight were female. Then definitely that is a clear indication that the majority are male. And... Uh, and, uh, and uh, most probably we are still waiting to see if the numbers will be rising because that is the number that we are given by the hospital by 3 p.m. And from that time up to now, the number of ambulances that have been coming here uh, has been very high, so definitely the numbers have risen. We are not aware the actual number, but we, I can approximate uh, most probably more than 100 uh, injured victims have been brought here. Uh, now, as as you can see on your screen, we are, uh, there's no any ambulance yet here because uh uh, at some point we are seeing the number of the ambulances re uh, reducing then after a few minutes then you see the high number of ambulances still coming in to bring more victims from all the corners of the city. We have been able also to speak to some of the family members within here who have been uh, able to tell us what happened. They have told us most of them they got calls from Ken H the hospital informing them that uh, their relatives had had been brought in here. Uh, let me speak to some of them. Lako naitwa nani? Jina langu jina langu naitwa Edward Chieng. Mbona umefika hapa? Nimefika na kuja na mgonjwa hapa kutoka sehemu za Uma Bay. Wewe umeleta mgonjwa wa maandamano ama si wa maandamano? Oh, sasa tunataka wale wa maandamano. Nani ambaye labda amekuja kumuona mgonjwa wake ambaye labda ameathirika na maandamano? Some of them are wary of speaking to us, but uh, we, Nani hapa na mgonjwa ambaye ameletwa kutokana na maandamano tuzungumze na dada unaitwa nani? Naitwa Diana. Mbona umefika hapa tufahamishe kwa kifupi? Uh, Tumekuja hapa kuna rafiki yangu amepata accident amekuwa ame tao kwa maandamano na ameshutiwa. Eh, so tumekuja hapa nataka kumuona. Eh. Labda umefahamu vipi amepigwa risasi? Niliambiwa nimepigwa simu ndio nikakuja hapa. Eh, so, nataka kumuona nataka kujua venye hali yake iko ni jua venye yako tu. Eh. Na, labda mmeweza kumuona kwa sababu tumeambiwa kwamba wengi hawajaweza kupata nafasi ya kuona wapendwa wao. Bado sijamuona bado. Eh. Niambiwa sababu nini? Wamesema bado wako kwa emergency. Lazima ongoje wahudumie kwanza ndio tunaweza kuona baadaye. Eh. Bingo unaitwa nani? Naitwa Fredo Nyango. So nimeleta rafiki yangu amepigwa risasi. But ya mguu imemkata katikati but nimeona nikamuona kwa sawa but ako tu sawa eh alipigwa pale parliament alikuwa kwa andamanaji alikuwa andamana akaingia ndani sasa afuta kufungua hizo mlango hizo fence akaingia ndani so ndani ya bunge ndani ya bunge ndani so waka ngotoka na wabunduki wakaanza kuwa shoot live bullets so yeye eh, akapigwa kanister hapa kando akapigwa kwa thai na akapigwa tena mbunduki ya mguu katikati. Rato zote mbili zimepasuka. Ya, yeah. umepewa nafasi ya kumuona? Nimeona nimekuwa nayo huko ndani na ni macha kitibiwa. Kwa hivyo wanapokea matibabu kule ndani. Ya, yeah, anapokea matibabu. Ya. Yeah. So you can hear from uh, friends and family members to the victims that some of them have been given a chance to be able to see their loved ones who are still uh, recuperating inside here, the emergency and accident department at Ken H. And uh, many of them, as those ones who have spoken on TV, have heard definitely the injuries were to do with bullet wounds. And because most of them were demonstrators, we are yet to find out if there are any other person who had been injured who is not a demonstrator, maybe police officers, but from the hospital what they said they had only received 45 uh, victims of the protest or the injuries during the protest eight were female and that was the statement they gave to us at 3 p.m. but we're still waiting to see if the hospital will be able to update the data and also apart from that also if uh, the number will increase because definitely there is high number of the people who have been injured during today's protest and they are still coming in here at the Kenyatta National Hospital Accident and Emergency 
department. I want to see if I can be able to speak to uh, some of the medics and uh, hear if they have a word. Sister Ujambo, labda unaweza zungumza na sisi utuambie umepokea she has said she is not comfortable to speak with us but you can speak to some of them. Ndugu naitwa nani? Naitwa Joseph. Yes. Naona wewe ni tabibu hapa labda siku imekuwaje tumeona wagonjwa ni wengi wakifika hapo waliojeruhiwa. Yes, ndio wamejeruhiwa lakini sasa tuna uwezo wa kujua idadi kamili ni wangapi watatolewa baadaye ndio tujue idadi kamili ni ngapi lakini wameletwa kwa wengi wale wanaofika wanapokea matibabu tumeona wengi wamejeruhiwa sana kwa bunduki ni kweli ya ni kweli wamejeruhiwa kwa bunduki lakini watatoa idadi kamili na kutokana na kwamba idadi ya wale majeruhi wanaoletwa ni wengi labda changamoto ambazo mnapitia labda kule ndani kumejaa kuna nafasi ya kutosha kwa hudumia ah hiyo sitaweza si kuelezea kabili kwa sababu mimi si katika hiyo kitengo ya kujua kwamba ni wangapi wanafaa ku like, ni rooms zinafaa kushughulikiwa ni ngapi siko kwa katika hiyo kitengo Sasawa. So that is one of the medics who has been uh, handling those victims who have been brought in, uh, especially across the city, those ones who have been injured during today's anti-finance bill uh, protest. And uh, you can also see that uh, a lot of medics have been brought in uh, from even other hospitals to be able to help Kenyatta National Hospital to cater uh, in regard to the high number of victims. So those ones that you are seeing, some of them uh, have been brought in from other hospitals. Uh, to be able to help those ones who have been injured and also to highlight many of the victims are also coming from All Saints Cathedral where the hospital uh, the, the church had given space to medics who are offering free services to those injured and also there's another free uh, medical point I hear within the town I think at uh, Jamia Mosque so many of the victims are also coming from those two points because those are the nearest point to the city and the first point where the victims are being taken is all things and that place in Jamia and if the doctors there are feeling that they can be able not to handle those cases then they are sending them here at the Kenyatta National Hospital in the in terms of number of those ones maybe who have died I cannot be able to tell that because the hospital as we spoke to those in charge of the hospital they said by that time they did not have any uh, fatalities reported here but that might change in the course of the day so uh, we we'll still be following up uh, to see what will happen and, uh, and and see what will happen in the course of the day. Olive will be able to give more updates as this continues to unfold here at the Kenyatta National Hospital Accident and Emergency Department. Thank you for that update. Willie Lusige speaking to us from the Kenyatta National Hospital there where those who are injured in the protests are being taken. Earlier the Kenya Red Cross said those who are seriously injured were being taken to the Kenyatta National Hospital and the Mbagadi Hospital. And uh, Nakuru, we saw some pictures of a confrontation between protesters and the police, uh, but uh, the situation appears to have been contained. It appears that uh, the running battles were triggered uh, by the shooting of two protesters, but we'll have more information uh, shortly. We'll have those pictures on your screen with me in studio. I have John Kinuthia. And those are the images that are coming out of Nakuru uh, next to those uh, of the Kenyatta National Hospital. I was asking earlier, John, John mm. Kinuthia is a leadership and security strategist, mm. uh, whether it's usual to see medical personnel outside the accident and uh, emergency receiving area. Sure. So this being a crisis situation, which <clears throat> the formal... Uh, term is uh, disaster management because it's a crisis or crisis management. Um, the medics you see lining up are affiliated to the medic uh, to the patients being brought in by ambulance. So there are two, ki uh, two sets of medics. There are those at the hospital receiving the patients and then there are those who are bringing the patients in ambulances. So the medic who's b bringing the patient in ambulances, especially the critical cases, they're obligated to hand them over directly to the medics at the hospital so that they can brief them, tell them uh, the status of the patient, give them their vitals, their blood pressure, their oxygen, their heart rates and all that 
and most importantly, any medical notes that are necessary. For example, if you had already administered some sorts of medications, uh, if the hospital staff were to administer the same medications, it would be an overdose. So they need to hand over personally, bef uh, hand over the patient to the hospital staff. So the, the ones you see queuing are the ones who have brought them in ambulances. And because this is a triage uh, situation, which means that uh, the hospital uh, uh, emergency you see queuing are the ones who have brought them in ambulances and because this is a triage uh, situation which means that uh, the hospital uh, uh, emergency teams will be prioritizing the more serious cases especially you had uh, the, the doctor at or, or the medic at uh, the church say some people have very serious wounds like broken limbs and uh, gunshot wounds even to the head uh, and all that so all right so I'm seeing uh, the representatives of uh, some human rights organizations including Haki Africa that is Halid, who is about to address the press there. Yes. Let's listen in and we'll means, continue the conversation yes, later. Khalid, ni moja wanaharakati. We rushed here after we heard that uh, the injured have been rushed here. We've spoken to some of the doctors who have told that uh, they've received two dead. Uh, they, when they arrived, they were already dead. Uh, one had a uh, uh, was shot in the head and the other one was already dead. I don't know where he was injured. And uh, they've also informed us that uh, so far they have treated around 125. 125. Most of them uh, injuries, uh, you know, uh, soft tissue injuries. Uh, others were injured uh, in different places. But uh, it's really sad to see these kinds of uh, injuries because this procession, uh, this protest was largely peaceful. And uh, we didn't expect uh, that, uh, you know, these kinds of fatalities would be reported, these kinds of injuries would be happening. Uh, we are very saddened and we want to inform uh, the state that uh, Kenya has moved many years from those dark days, yes, you know, yes. and uh, we are not in a police state. Yes. And uh, the police should not use excessive force on peaceful, youthful protesters. Uh, we will work with the necessary institutions, we will work with the necessary authorities to make sure those that uh, have been killed, those that have been injured, they get justice. We cannot allow, you know, any use of excessive force like this. And we are committed to ensure that the message gets through, that the government listens to the people. Kenya is a country that is governed by a rule of law. Yes. And police cannot use excessive force on peaceful protesters like this. Over 100 people have been treated here. Yes. We cannot have such kind of a situation. And uh, we will stand firmly with those that are injured. We'll stand firmly with those that have been killed and make sure that they get justice. Taxes must fall. Yes, of course. Uh, this will not deter us yes. from uh, delivering the message. And the message is very clear. Reject finance bill. Why are we being forced to accept this? You cannot force this bill on Kenyans' throats. Why is the message not getting through to these people? Yeah, 204 people against 54 million. Does that even make sense? So we are saying enough is enough. Listen to the masses. Listen to the people. Yes. Come down from your high seat and, and listen to the voices. You can't say you want to dialogue, then you are killing people. How is that dialogue when you're shooting live bullets at peaceful protesters? That is not right. That is unacceptable. Yes. We are living in a country governed by a constitution and the rule of law. Kwanini yes. munatumia live bullets against people? Why are you doing that? So this is unacceptable. Na tumesema enough is enough. Yes. And we must, we must listen to the voices of the people. Yes. Well, right now we've informed Ipoa. We, of course, are waiting for the next of kin to be informed. Uh, we can't just come in. Plazima tutafute familia zawale wa meuliwa wailezewe kwanza. We must respect that. Uh, after that, of course, just as we've done with Rex, just as uh, we are doing with Evans, we'll proceed to the post-mortem and then immediately uh, make sure those officers who are involved are uh, removed from uh, the service, uh, investigation zifanywe, and after that, washikwe wafungulue mashtaka na wafungwe korokoroni. Well, they can't count, but they, they told us definitely some of those wounds are as a result of shooting. Uh, we have quite a number that probably is soft tissue, but they say that out of the 125 or so, 
a good number. They said a good number. I can't tell the number, but they said a good number are gunshot wounds victims. So yeah. we, we currently have over 100 people at Jamia Mosque. So those are casualties that have not been reported. Uh, currently we have people that are in Jamia Mosque. We have a Red Cross team. Ambao bado hawajafika hapa. Kwa hivyo namba ambazo Hussein Khalid amesema ni tofauti ni wale ambao kwa hapa Kenyatta National Hospital lakini kuna wale ambao bado mpaka sasa hivi tunaweza kukolekt. Lakini data itaweza kupotekana labda kesho ama kesho kutwa lakini tunaomba mwenye uh, tunaomba sisi sote wale ambao wako saizi town tafadhali turudi nyumbani manake tulikuwa tushaamua ni kuanzia saa sita mpaka saa ngapi saa moja. kwa hivyo tungewaomba wale uh, saa kumi na mbili naarifiwa hivyo kwa wale jenzi na wale ambao wamekuwa na sisi tafadhali turudi nyumbani tujipange na tuangalie vipi tutakavyoenda si ndio yeah. yeah, we are appealing to the protesters please wherever you are if you are listening the time imefika Please let's end this now. Make sure you reach home when there is still daylight. Don't give them an excuse because we know last time wale waliuliwa ilikuwa ni usiku. And this is the time when they send out goons to break into shops, to destroy property and then they use that to kill more of our youth. So we are appealing to everyone who is out there right now. The message has been delivered. We've occupied parliament. Kila mtu amesikia message. Zakayo Ashuke reject finance bill. Please, please and please. Right now, let's make our way home peacefully and we leave to protest another day. Thank you very much. Down, down, finance bill. Down, down, finance bill. Zakayo Ashuke.
Kujus Kina mas. Kujus Kina mas. Kena sida apa? Kita mau mengilia pesa. Kita mengilia pesa. Kita skrin ya mas. Pasti nama Rico. Rico. Kita dua. Ada yang ni sejuk. Mau di mangga api. Aku punya pale, akai pale, banyak lomba kura, aku jadi skizer. Jadi aku nak cama, aku mau kabira, ame ini kama yo. Thank you. 
रुटो अशोक है अशोक है Anthony Moheria of Nyeri and Apostolic Administrator of Embu, Archbishop Martin Kiwuva of Mombasa, Archbishop Philip Anyolo of Nairobi, Right Reverend Joseph Mairura Okemwa of Kisi, Right Reverend Alfred Rotich of Kericho, Right Reverend Norman Kingo Wambua of Machakos, Right Reverend Peter Kiara of Marsabit, Right Reverend David Kamau Nganga, Auxiliary Bishop of Nairobi, Right Reverend Anthony Reri Mukobo, Bishop of Isiolo, Right Reverend Salesius Mugambi, Bishop of Meru, Right Reverend James Maria Wainaina, Bishop of Moranga, Right Reverend Paul Kariki Njiru, Bishop of Wote, Right Reverend Dominic Mengich, Bishop of Eldoret, Right Reverend John Obala Owa, Bishop of Ngong, Right Reverend John Joseph Mbatia, Bishop of Nyaururu, Right Reverend Joseph Obanyi Sagwe, Bishop of Kakamega, Right Reverend Joseph Mongela, Bishop of Kitui, Right Reverend Michael Odiwa, Bishop of Homa Bay, Right Reverend Willie Badlago, Bishop of Malindi, Right Reverend Mark Kadima, Bishop of Bungoma, Right Reverend George Mutaka, Bishop of Garissa, Right Reverend John Binda, Bishop of Lodwa, Right Reverend Yorinimus Emusugut Joya, Bishop of Maralal, Right Reverend Henry Juma Odonya, Bishop of Kitale, Right Reverend Cleophas Oseso, Bishop of Nakuru, Right Reverend Simon Peter Kamomoe, Auxiliary Bishop of Nairobi, Right Reverend Wallace Nganga, Auxiliary Bishop of Nairobi, Right Reverend John Lele, Auxiliary Bishop of Eldoret, and Monsignor John Jue, Apostolic Administrator, Military Ordinary. We take this chance also to invite all our Kenyan Catholics that beginning this evening, we are beginning a novena, the Sacred Heart of Jesus Christ, a prayer of nine days, the whole country, to pray for our country, the novena, the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Bishop Chair. Uh, we are now kindly to we questions. We have no other country we can go to. We need to maintain we peace. And one who Whatever has else question. comes yes, in the coming kindly. days, we need to protect zealously our country, Kenya, by maintaining peace and order. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you we are presented all. our views as invited by the government we in the public. You. Uh, we know you also have gone through tough moments in this uh, street protest. Let's give them just a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. You will get a copy once it has been uh, tidied up. Just a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. I Thank you very much, members of the media. We have here a statement released by the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops. It is entitled, God Save Our Beloved Country, with a quotation from Matthew, chapter 25, verse 40. Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. The current situation that we are now witnessing calls us to address the nation and especially our dear young people. We also wish to speak clearly to our leadership, the president, the entire government, and the members of parliament. We appeal and plead that we have a moment of reflection and listening. We are saddened that what started as lawful protests has degenerated into violent conflict. This was not the initial aim of the Gen Z protests. We earnestly appealed the police not to shoot at the protesters. We also appealed the young people to remain peaceful we condole with all those who have been shot dead and others who have been injured and plead for calm. No one should lose life. We also need to advise against unconstitutional actions like attempting to take over parliament due to their serious consequences. Once more, we are pleading for a peaceful and meaningful engagement for the good of our nation. Number one, excessive taxation in the contentious finance bill 2024-2025. The finance bill 2024-2025 mostly of resistance from
must pay taxes. But the government must not overtax its citizens. And it should not be in denial about its intended excessive taxation. The country is bleeding, and therefore we invite the government to reflect on this matter with the seriousness it deserves. Number two, the Gen Z on the finance bill. We understand, therefore, why the Gen Zs have taken to the streets to express their displeasure to the government. The young generation is alive to the negative impact punitive taxes have in their own lives. The government needs to face the plain truth that families are immensely suffering. Young people have reached a point of taking it upon themselves to express discontent with the insensitivity of the government to these unwarranted taxes that only raise, raise higher the cost of living. The government must listen to the pain of its citizens caused by the high cost of living. Ignoring them will only escalate tensions in the country and draw young people and citizenry into despair. We plead with the president that he listens to the voices of so many and respond concretely to the current situation triggered by the proposed finance bill. Number three, genuine intent to support young people. We, the Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, understand the desperation of the young people. We have consistently called on the government to be responsible for creating an environment in which young people can use their knowledge to create jobs, get employed, or pursue meaningful opportunities. We are yet to see a clear and well-defined roadmap for this end. The billions siphoned from taxpayer money, for example, are enough to employ thousands of youths. In the absence of tangible initiatives, young people are right in expressing their desperation. They are not getting the promised jobs. They are not seeing a government that is committed to using the taxes it collects for justifiable ends. Nor are they pursuing the corrupt. They are coming out to point out the challenges of the government is therefore understandable and we commend them for being proactive citizens. We are encouraged and must applaud you, our dear young people, for keeping away from looting and violence. We appreciate that you have generated a slogan that we are peaceful. This is a step in the right direction, as affirmed in scripture. The Lord examines the righteous, but the wicked, those who love violence, he hates with a passion. Psalm 11 verse 5. Number 4. Purpose of Gen Z protest should be respected. Even as we commend you, Gen Z, for being proactive, we would like to advise that in themselves, protests will not solve the problem of government insensitivity in addressing problems like the finance bill. With your creativity and innovative technology tools available, which you are using to organize yourself and pass your message to the government, you need to consider more innovative approaches to draw constructive engagement to address the social and economic wars our country is facing. Do not give up on pursuing direct engagement with government and other stakeholders. We also encourage patience as you engage. 
As bishop, we also want to warn you, our dear young people, not to be misused for hidden interest by some of the people who may be interested to use your protests. While pursuing genuine concerns of unemployment, a bleak future, limited opportunities for self-development, and the fear of the shrinking economy, there are people out there whose interests are to capitalize on your grievances to advance their agenda. We ask you to be on guard so that you may not be misused for goals that are not part of your genuine concerns. Number five, use of excessive force by the police. We, the Catholic bishops, while appreciating several occasions the police have tried to act rightly, decry and condemn in the strongest terms the use of force by the police, the arrests, and the indiscriminate and unnecessary use of live bullets. Unwarranted attacks on peaceful protesters cannot be justified. The police have many ways to ensure protests remain peaceful. The police should focus on criminals who implant themselves in peaceful protests to create chaos and rob or destroy property. As a country, we have seen demonstrations and protests in the past. We know that police should ensure peaceful <coughs> assemblies of any. As a country, we have seen demonstrations and protests in the past. We know that police should ensure peaceful <coughs> assemblies of any kind and not fuel violence and public hate towards the same police that are supposed to protect them. As a God-fearing nation, we should not forget Isaiah 1:17, which says, Learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Being police does not give one a license <coughs> to take away innocent lives. Six, places of worship as sacred. Remember, places of worship are not... Mwa Stephen Kalonzo Msioka, kiongozi wa Waipa. Hapa vile vile tuko na mwenzetu, uh, Secretary General wa Jubilee Party. Na wengine bado wako njiani wanakuja, eh, wakiwemo wabunge wetu. Wengi bado wako kwenye eh, maeneo ya bunge, eh, kumekuwa na mchafuko uh, usika, menalasiri ya leo. Na tunasikitika sana ya kwamba wa Kenya umepoteza maisha yao. Na tumekuwa na umwagikaji damu katika bunge letu la Kenya. Kwa miaka yetu stini ile tumesherekea Madaraka Day, hatujawahi kuwa na tukio kama hili. Wa Kenya kuwawa mbele ya bunge yao, mbele ya wanahabari na dunia yote. Na leo tutataka tukashifu kabisa kitendo hiki cha kialifu polisi waliotumia risasi kuwa watoto wetu na tuambie ya kwamba wote wataajibika mbele ya sheria pili tutataka tuseme ya kwamba mheshimiwa Ruto alikuwa amesema kule Nyahururu ya kwamba ako tayari kuwasikiza wa Kenya na hasua kizazi cha Gen Z na leo badala ya kuwasikiza ameamuru polisi wake kurusha risasi, kurusha tear gas, kuwajeruhi na kuwaua watoto wetu. Hawa watoto sio waazimio, sio wa Kenya kwanza, ni watoto wa Kenya ambao wamekuja kutetea haki zao na wana haki kulingana na kipengee cha 37 cha katiba yetu kufanya maandamano ambayo wamefanya siku ya leo njia ya kinyama ambayo wameshughulikiwa na polisi wetu 
sisi kama wanaazimio tunakashifu na tunasema kufika kesho tutakuwa tunapeana taarifa zaidi baada ya kupata ripoti kutoka maeneo yote ya nchi yetu kaunti ya 47 sababu tuasikia kando na mauaji ya Nairobi kaunti zingine pia kuna majeruhi na kuna wakenya wamepoteza maisha yao lakini kwa leo tuasema kitendo kimefanyika bungeni wakenya kupoteza imani na wabunge wao ambao wameongeza ushuru kiholela wameambiwa hawasikii na waswahili wanasema asiyesikia la mkuu kuvunjika guu wakuu wetu ni wakenya wale wameingia bungeni leo na kitendo cha leo cha maanisha wakenya wamepoteza imani na bunge yao wamepoteza imani na serikali ya William Samoe Arap Ruto na sisi tunaungana na wakenya wote kutoka sehemu zote za Kenya ambao wamesema Ruto must go ambao wamesema Ruto must resign na tumwombia badala ya wewe kuendelea kuwa pale na wakenya wamepoteza imani nawe uongozi wako na serikali yako jiuzulu ili uzuie umwagikaji damu vijana wawili wamewawa tangu maandamano haya yaanze kijana Evans kijana Rex vijana wadogo sana kando na hawa bado tulikuwa tunafuatilia hata hawajazikwa leo vijana wengine wamewawa na bwana Ruto na askari wake Leo kama wanazimio tunaungana na wakenya wengine kusema Ruto must go, Ruto must resign, he must do the honorable thing. Sababu wakenya kuingia pale wachukue ile the mess of parliament, authority of parliament inamaanisha bunge hilo na serikali hii hawana imani na hotel. So let them do the honorable thing and resign. That is what we are calling upon them na nataka wenzangu waweze kuongelea uh, mambo haya. Lakini pia kama waziri kwa waziri wa ulinzi na aweze kupeana taarifa yetu rasmi na ni muombe pia SG wetu wa uh, eh, jubilee mheshimiwa kioni aweze kuongezea your excellency karibu thank you thank you i had actually already read out the statement by azimio leadership which was further to what was issued earlier 
by our party leader, the Honorable Raila Amolo Dinga. So this was additional to that. But you also taken the opportunity to lay it very clearly. Kenyans have demonstrated across the country, from Turukana to Lamu, from Kitui to Kakamega, <laughs> from Makweni to Lodwa. Ah, Lodwa is in Turukana. Turukana okay. Yes. In Garisha, the 47 counties of our republic, and all of them were unanimous. The finance bill must be withdrawn in its totality. And shockingly, their calls, clarion calls, were not heeded, resulting in a matter that has never happened in the history of this country, where symbolically the Kenyan people have withdrawn their delegated authority to parliament by taking hold of the mace. And that actually means the sovereign power, the sovereign authority of the Kenyan people is vested in the people themselves. So this is not a matter that uh, Kenya Kwanza and uh, Mwishmua William Ruto can take lightly. They have said Ruto must go. It is not as Mio saying so. It is the people of Kenya saying Ruto must go. And so the killings we are saying must stop. And the Honorable Eugene Wamalo has explained in some very fine detail why our military, our KDF, who have done beautifully, served with such distinction, not only in Kenya, but in places like Sierra Leone, <laughs> in Mozambique. Right now, they are doing duty in Somalia from the days when we were there with President Kibaki. They should not be drawn into this local conflict. They are also our children. They all get affected. They all have pace lips, which are looking very thin. And therefore, uh, we just wanted to reiterate that point. And finally, media. Media. The freedom of expression, the freedom of the press. Kenya Kwanza. We, we gather that the, the plan is they wait until 6.30, according to Kindiki, and then close down the country. This cannot happen, not in Kenya. This is a democracy and a functioning democracy where the will of the people must always prevail. And the majority have spoken. This is why we are saying Honorable Ruto should do the right thing, the honorable thing, resign before Sri Lanka happens here in Kenya. All right. Carson. Mr. Pioni. I associate myself with the comments uh, that have been made by my colleagues, but add that uh, this is not the first time that we have been
जो कोई का जोंदे बेटी नहीं है Six places of worship as sacred.
We welcome civic engagement by all leaders, in particular the youth, in addressing issues of vital public concern. We call for restraint on all sides and encourage all leaders to find peaceful solutions through constructive dialogue. The statement has been jointly issued by the Canadian High Commission, the Royal Danish Embassy, the Embassy of Finland, Embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany, Embassy of Ireland, Embassy of the Netherlands, Embassy of the Republic of Estonia, Embassy of Norway, Embassy of Sweden, Embassy of Romania, Embassy of Belgium, the British High Commissioner, Commission, I beg your pardon, and the Embassy of the the United States of America. It is not the only statement that has been issued this afternoon for following those events uh, that have been playing out on your screens. The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights has also written a letter to the President, William Samoy Ruto, a call to action on the escalating human rights violations and state of anarchy in the country, they say, during the ongoing protests against the Finance Bill 2024. In the letter, they say, Mr. President, today is a sad day in the history of our beloved motherland. The Kenya National Commission on Human Rights has been monitoring the shocking escalation of human rights violations seen in the last few hours, including excessive use of force and indiscriminate shooting of civilians by police, as well as a section of violent protesters. Pursuant to its constitutional mandate to protect human rights for all in Kenya, the Commission hereby calls on your immediate and direct intervention as follows. A, they say that he swore to defend and protect the Constitution of Kenya. They say this is the time to do it. They also demand... that era of all human rights and fundamental freedoms, the duty of